Hey, this is Ralph. I just had a student in my CIS 195 class ask about putting text on a background image so that it's easily read, and I think we can tackle that. And this is a good example right over here at the Small Business Admin website where they've got this large photo and they wanted this text and call to action to really pop, so they put it on a dark background there. And you notice it has that gradient effect so it kind of blends into the photo. We can do the same thing. Let's head over to the markup. And in between my header and footer, I'm going to create a section. Class equals, we'll use hero since this is kind of like a hero graphic, hero image. And h2. So we've got our text, and that should be enough for the, H, uh, for the HTML side of the house. Now let's get them into our, into our styles. Now my hero section, it is a block element, but still, I'm going to go ahead and put in width 100%. And I'll give it a height of something like 500 pixels, so it's really big. And at least for the short term, background color pink so that we can visualize it. And now I can see I've got this large block in order to work with. All right, now let's get to work here. Um, background image URL. I'm going to go to my images folder, and I'm going to look for my puffin.jpg. That looks pretty good. And even before I check it, I am going to go ahead and throw in background size cover to make sure it fills up the space. Ah, it does fill up the space, but my puffin needs to be moved up. So I'm going to take background position, and let's just do center. That should be sufficient, and now we can see that image there. But I do want to flip it around. So I'm going to take this whole hero section, transform, and let's do scale, let's see, I want to go horizontal, so we're going to do scale x, negative 1, which will flip it. Normally I would use scale to change the size of something, the scaling, but if you put in that negative 1 like that, we're going to flop it around, so now that puffin is pointing towards the right side, which gives me a left area to work with. Um, now to make sure that I'm working in that left area with my content, I am going to do a position relative on here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Position relative. And now I can do a position on this H2 text or content inside of there. So I'm going to go to my dot hero. Now I'll do a child selector H2. And so that we can really see this text before we worry about that background color, I'm going to make the font size of this text really big. How about like five rems? I have a reset rule that gets rid of the bold status of my heading, so I need to put that font weight bold on there. How's it looking, by the way? Ah, look at that. That looks pretty funny over there, right? It's all backwards because I flipped around that other content. So let me do kind of the same thing here. Transform, scale x, negative 1. That's going to flip it the right way. Cool. It's over there. Even though doesn't really look like it's going to be necessary, but since I did a position relative on the parent, I'm going to do a position absolute on this child element, and let's make sure it is zero from the left, zero from the top. I'm going to give it a width of width of 100% and a height, same as the parent, 500 pixels. Now, you're probably not going to really notice too much with that doesn't really seem to have much of an impact, but I think it's going to be helpful once we start putting in that gradient, which we're almost there. But one last thing, I'm going to go ahead and put a big padding on here of like three M's so that that text is a little bit further away from that content. Might have been a little bit too much. All right, let's get to work on the gradient. So for the gradient, here's how what we're going to try here. I'm going to put a background image. It's weird that you, when you're doing gradient colors, you're still using the background image property. And I want to write in a linear dash gradient. Now when you do the linear gradient, it's a function and it contains several arguments. Now starting off, let's just do something really easy. Red comma blue. So we're going to go red comma blue and you can see it gradients, it blends in red blue from top to bottom. Now we can change that by in front of the first color, just put in um, to right comma. There we go. So now I'm going to, the direction of the gradient is going to be to the right, red, blue. We say, yep, okay, that's cool. That's what we want. However, I don't want red and blue. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock these colors down so that they are on my next line so we can focus here. So I've got red and blue. I want my first color not to be red. I want it to, to be RGBA, 0, 0, 0, which is black. And then the fourth value or parameter for RGBA is the transparency. If I do 1, that's solid black. Now similarly, I'm going to change out the blue, RGBA, 0, 0, 0. Again, that's black, comma, 0, which is invisible. So instead of transitioning from red to blue, I'm going to be transitioning from a solid black to a clear black. It's kind of weird to say it that way. And we can see we start to get that effect. However, the transition is, is starting a little bit too soon. It starts from the very beginning and smooths over. If I want there to be more darkness on the left side of this background where that text is, well, I can just put in some more values. How about if I did RGBA, 0, 0, 0, and then like 0.4. I'll do that one. And I'll do another one, RGBA, 0, 0, 0, and then something like 0.4. 7, comma. So now I've got four colors that I'm transitioning to in this linear gradient. It's solid black to a, um, and I went the wrong way. I need to do 0.7 and then 0.4. The closer you get to zero, the clearer it gets. So I do solid, then I get a little clearer, then a little clearer, and then completely clear. And that should have a nice effect where that black is smoothing all the way over. And if you want to exaggerate this just a little bit more, right after these colors, right after those percentages, I'm sorry, right after those colors, we can put a percentage in. So I could say, you know, I want this to be like 20% in. And then for the next color, I want that to be maybe going to about 40%. And then for that third color, 70%. And then by the fourth one, it can just be 100%, and that's going to go right in there, 100%. Remember, this last parentheses right here is the part of the linear gradient function. All right, so let's see how that looks. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, of course, you can keep playing around with those numbers in order to get that black going a little bit further over, but it's just adjusting those values right there. But that's how we can start to put that bright white text on a dark background so it really starts to pop and stand out and then kind of blends into where the subject of that photo is, that background hero image. Thanks for hanging out with me.